Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and here's a video of my stock vines. Um, I'm going to show you a few pieces today. They haven't come from the car boot sale, they've come in um, privately. Um, I haven't got them laid out in front of me of course in a minute as you can see. I've got one really really nice item I want to show you first um, and then I'll move on into a few smaller pieces. So. Hopefully, you'll appreciate this piece like I do. Okay guys, so here's the uh, first piece I'm going to show you. And for the, the those of you who live over the uh, pond, you'll know exactly what this is. This is the Empire State Building, guys. Um, made sometime probably in the 70s, 80s. Um, really, really unusual piece. Now... It's very large, so it's hard to um, you know get it all in one shot. It's a good five and a half foot tall. The top section here comes off, and it has a little compartment here for hidden storage. So a little safe, if you like, there, a little hidden safe in the top. This section here opens up, and I have shelving. All these shelves here. There's about five shelves. You can alter them any way you want. Um, put them for any height you want. I'll give you an example now. So you just simply cut them any way you want to make the size of the shelves you want, if you want shelves. What I was thinking of doing is putting some hooks along here and turn it into maybe a jewellery box. Um, down here then, obviously, we have... Let me see, am I down there? Down the bottom of the Empire State Building, you have the drawers. There's two drawers. Now, this is, would have been, my, I say would have been, it may have been a mass produced item at one point, or somebody may have made it, I'm not 100%. Um, it's made of, um, I'm not sure if it's like a chip wood. It looks well certainly you know look it's wood anyway guys maybe solid wood actually looking at it um, hand painted in wood um, but it's got this almost flat pack look to it but it isn't so it's the Empire State Building guys um, bear with me a second as you can see guys, um, it's pretty much as tall as me, or not far off as tall as me. So well over five and a half foot. Um, I'm about five foot eight. Um, so this is about five and a half foot tall. Um, I don't know if they were mass produced in America, but they certainly, um, I haven't seen another over here in the UK period. This is the only one I've seen in 15, 20 years. Um, it's heavy. It's really, really heavy, guys. Uh, solid piece. You know, I'm looking at it and I really don't think it is flat pack. Oh, oh rather, not flat pack, rather. It's not chip wood. It is actually solid wood. Um, so, if anybody in America or whatever knows about these, I wouldn't mind um, your opinion on when they were made and who sold them. They go through like Liberties or you know um, Tiffany's or something like that. They're a really stylish piece, real nice top quality. And to be honest with you, I thought would make an amazing jewellery box. What a unique jewellery box for somebody. Um, I haven't even offered it up for sale, and I haven't got a clue what to offer it up for sale for yet. I paid £20 for it. £20, guys. That is all I paid. I'm going to do some research. I haven't done that yet. Um, but if I was to convert it into a jewellery box, I wouldn't be selling it for less than £100 anyway. Just as I converted it into a jewellery box. Um, lined up and with a bit of velvet or something and some hooks and that. You know, somebody would pay the money. But we'll see what they sell for. So this is my first piece I wanted to show you. It's really heavy. 
And to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind if it sat in my living room. Or if my daughter had it for a jewellery box um, for Christmas or something. Um, but we'll see. Maybe there's an American somewhere that will uh, absolutely love this. <laughs> Here comes Shannon. You want to tell him how much you love it? I do. You do, do you, babe? Gorgeous, Nick. Wouldn't that make the most beautiful jewellery box? Yeah, but I bet, huh. I bet I'd be too small for the amount of jewellery I got. I know you got a lot of jewellery, but can you imagine hanging all your necklaces down there, or having bars going across with all your necklaces hanging on, and shelves for your rings and the drawers, mm -hmm. and then you hide all your gold up in the top. And... There is no use putting it there now, is there? Well, you went down there. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> So yeah, that's next. Well, we'll see. Maybe it'll turn into a Christmas present for you. You never know. Um, well, You'll it... look wrapping it for us. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll uh, I'll move this out the way now and I'll carry on with the film. Um, as you can see, my uh, eleven-year-old daughter absolutely loves it. I love the piece. Exactly. Different. I understand it goes against what I said yesterday in the film about keeping little items small and cheap to post. Um, Got to go off where you pay, what the postage is, and what your margin is at the end. Can you um, take it apart? No, darling, it's a solid unit. Very heavy, too. So, as I say, guys, um, anyone got any advice on this one, I would appreciate it. Okay, guys, so, next piece I'm going to show you now is a group of graduated decanters. Now, when I say graduated, they are a set the three different sizes going from smaller to larger. Um, they're 19th century, they're Irish, they're hand cut and they are spectacular. Um, and I do think it was part of an even larger set again. I think there may have been four, five, six of these decanters running up. Um, now the downside with these decanters um, is the one stopper doesn't quite fit the bottle and it's got a chip. So I'm going to have to have the stop a polished and cut and all three of these decanters has got blooming or misting on the inside or otherwise known as foxin. Now I done a video the other day telling you how you can take foxin out of pieces you can get your hand into um, and use a polishing paste. These are going to have to be dipped in acid uh, but they are spectacular. Now in perfect condition without the misting um, without this stopper uh, chipped and fit in. Um, you're probably talking it's a 200, 250 pound set of decanters by year for the three decanters. Uh, individually, they'd be 50, 60 pound for the smaller one all the way up to sort of 95 pound each for the larger two. 75 to 95 pound each for the larger two in perfect condition. Um, let me have a little look a second. In, I've got a book on bottles. Can I see it quickly? Just out of curiosity. You can't as right. Bear with me. Just out of curiosity, guys. If I can find the bottle. Now the book I'm using is the decanter, an illustrated History of glass bottles from 1660. I'll give you the ISBN number, so if anybody wants it, I have actually done a book recommendation on this book. But there's the ISBN number, guys. So if you want to order the book, it is a good book. I'm going to have a quick glance now, because these are going to be 19th century, so I don't need to go stupid early. And what I'm mainly looking for, believe it or not, is I'm looking for the stopper. So I'll be able to date it off the stopper. Stoppers. Let's move on a minute. Right, hang on. It's not over there. Did early Victorian, I want earlier than that. There we go. That's the stopper I got. Uh, so, the decanters are earlier, I think, than the um, the ones illustrated in the book here. The ones in the book here are normal cylindrical decanters around 1825. 
But what's important here for the dating is, if we look here, page 308 guys, the very top corner bottle here, you can see there's the stopper. So, there's the stopper, so I can date them off the stopper. But I would have thought they were a fraction earlier than 1820, 1825. Um, I honestly thought they'd be, you know, 1800. And they very well may be. They have strawberry diamond cut in. Bear with me. There's the uh, cutting on this bottle. All the uh, neck rings, these are neck rings, they're all notched or cut. Um, I've got neck rings coming down underneath, it's all notched. You've got this beautiful band here with the fan detail and the strawberry diamond cut in. They're spectacular decanters, guys. They really are. Now, what I'll probably do is I'll get them dipped, get them restored, and to be totally honest with you, I'll probably test it to see if that one bit well I'll probably offer these out individually I'll probably go probably 65 85 and 85 or 75 a piece something like that they're not going to cost me a fortune to dip but they're going to take a long long time and the reason I say that is um, the gentleman I use for the dipping of the glass he has to wait until he has enough to ship off now these are spectacular decanters um, I may even offer them out as they are, to be honest with you, I haven't decided yet. Do I want to put them away or do I, and I offer out something spectacular when it's finished, or do I just offer them out as they are, drop the price down, and let someone else have the work? This stopper needs recut in and fit into the bottle, and they all need a clean. Other than that, oh, what an amazing set of decanters, guys. I paid a fiver a bottle. Now, I to sell crystal decanters. If they're signed, I'll get 10, 20, 30 pounds from. If they're unsigned, they back out to the car boot sale for 5 or 10 quid. Um, and that's obviously what someone else has done. They couldn't see a signature on them because obviously they're that early. Um, and then, you know, oh, five or a bottle. And they're gone. Um, and my friend actually paid less than that. I paid him a five or a bottle. So I don't know what he bought them at, but it wouldn't have been a lot of money, guys. He's probably bought them in for two or three quid a bottle because of the mist in. Um, it's about time, to be honest with you, some company came out with something you could use to clean this misting out of the bottles. Um, something to really get in and eat into the lime scale and the fox in. But we'll see. I may have a little go, try a few new products. It's been a while. See if I can do it. If not, I'll decide whether to out them as a job lot or whether to clean them up and have them sold separately. But I've got that many projects and big money pieces at the moment. By big money, a couple of hundred pound items um, that have come in that I want to move on. So we'll see what happens. But what an amazing set of decanters, guys. Absolutely spectacular. Really, really top end decanters, nice Regency decanters. Okay, guys, so just going to finish off this little video now um, with a little group of ceramics. Um, I don't know if you've been watching my uh, videos, you'll be aware that um, I bought. A load of boxes and I didn't actually go through them and basically everything was costing me a pound and two pound a piece. Um, well this lot here stands me in at a pound an item, okay? Um, it's nothing spectacular, yeah? But there are a couple of interesting pieces and it is work in stock. So, first things first, we have a little Victorian transfer printed, hand embellished and hand gilded um, jug. All the gold is done by hand. The yellow on the flowers is done by hand, the rest is transferred. It has original little pewter flip lid. Um, it's unmarked, just a little gilded cross there, so no maker's mark for me to identify. Probably a Staffordshire factory. 
Um, it's not going to be Fortunes guys, it's not going to be a tenner. Uh, this is going to be working stock now, it comes out here. Um, we got another late 19th century uh, luster, co copper luster jug. Um, nice shape actually and a nice handle, but again, it's not going to be Fortune, it's not going to break the bank. It's unmarked. Um, here we have a little stoneware one. Now normally you see stoneware in Dalton and things like that. This one is nowhere near the quality of that. This is almost a copy of Dalton. But it's almost as if they've put a Dalton jug in to make a mould and it certainly isn't a crisp mould. It's quite a poor jug to be totally honest with you. I'd say it's salt glaze mind. Still a bit of salt glaze. Um, and it is an old example. So, but again, it's not going to be fortunes, guys. None of these pieces by you are. This one here, no maker's mark. I love the modelled finish to it and the tall shape. Uh, it's a stamp made in England, and that is, there is some impressed numbers. So, I'm not sure who made this one. Um, out of the ones you've seen so far, I actually prefer this one without a shadow of a doubt, it's quite a nice shape so that one could actually be used quite decoratively the next two jugs I'm going to show you now are a bit better first of all we have a nice Art Deco jug lovely, lovely shape and lines to it um, nice handle produced by Silvac impress numbers and the script mark there we go guys now, realistically, this one should be 15 or 20 pound, um, but I haven't done no research yet, so we'll have a little look, see where we go. But they're in good condition, it's got this lovely step into it. It's a real nice Art Deco jug there. So, that one, I think, is the best of the jugs, to be honest with you. And then we have a nice, slightly later Arthur Wood with some birds and scenes and that in high relief. A bird there with a fish in his mouth little tree handle and it is signed Arthur Wood to the base and again it should be 12 or 15 pound for this one so out of those we had two that were relatively saleable jugs guys um, there's two little 50p they cost me uh, you got a little Crown Devon with Queen Elizabeth uh, ship on there and we have a little um, I actually like this one it's not a lot of value to it and if it was you know, if it was a bit bigger or didn't have the chip, I might give this away as a present. I still may. We have little jug. Hang on, sorry. <coughs> the jugs are dusty. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, what I like about this one is the three Welsh ladies sat down under a blanket with their little bonnets on. Um, I thought that something like that would have been a nice gift. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look out for something Welsh. Um, a nice little vintage Welsh piece that I can actually give off in my prizes. So if you're in Australia, America or whatever, you've got a chance of winning a little bit of Welsh history. But they were 50 pence each, guys. I don't care if they go to pound each. I didn't get to look in these boxes, if you remember. Um, I simply went there and the boxes were the 20 pieces, 20 pound. 10 pieces, 10 pound and so on. And they were already boxed up. I didn't get to see them. I've only now opened them to look at them, to be totally honest with you. Next we have two continental figures, uh, the first year holding a basket of flowers in a bisque porcelain, not bisque sorry, a blank porcelain, so pure white glazed, the next one's bisque, um, probably German looking at it, no maker's marks, definitely got a bit of age, so you know, I'd say around 1900, 1920s, it's quite a nice um, nice figure and then of course you have the Victorian gentleman in bisque which again is quite a, uh, a nice um, subject matter again no makers marks not even any impressed marks you normally see a mark or number at the back here uh, there's nothing at all there the figures are stinking dirty all of them I'll have to clean them but I think that Victorian gentleman might be a 20-25 pound figure to be honest with you. 
um, this blank or blank the chin if I whatever they call it it's just a white porcelain um, continental figure you know it's gonna be 10 or 15 maybe so those two are quite all right the two the art deco jug and the Arthur wood jug are okay other than that the other jugs now they're going up to the car boot sale guys I'm not even gonna waste my time with them but going from the Empire State Building to them three amazing Regency decanters coming in with a little bit of work in stock at the end that's still not a bad day's buying can't fault you guys I'm really pleased with that um, yeah hopefully you've enjoyed seeing that little selection of stock if you have um, I would appreciate a like and a share guys don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications you'll find me on Facebook I have a page on a group Antiques Arena you'll find me on eBay just run a search for Antiques Arena clearance and I have my own website antiquesarena.com or .co.uk thanks for watching guys bye for now